Today, we're back on my restart account to talk about what commander pairs I plan to use in KVK. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and this week has been insane. You all said you wanted to see me migrate back to KVK Season 2. I did it with my restart account, and you have been watching the heck out of those videos. So first of all, thank you. Thank you all for watching all those videos. You said you'd do it, and you did. But there's more. I have been getting, just a point of logistics before we start the video, I have been getting completely overrun with messages about migrating to the kingdom and am I in the leadership? I'm, I am very honored to be getting so many messages, but I'm totally tapped out and I can't respond. Like, over 50 messages from people asking me questions about this kingdom. If you want to join the kingdom, go to the Alliance SIP. They're also at the temple. Message any of the officers in that alliance, but specifically, you could target Mori. You could also go and target Max, and I believe there was one more, Jillos. Message any of the three of them. Send your messages there. I want to reply. I'm tapped out, man. I genuinely cannot reply to all the messages I'm getting. It's too many. I'm overwhelmed. Reach out to those players if you want to come to the kingdom. I'm not in the kingdom's leadership, although I am... Pretty sure they'll drop me into the council for guidance on stuff, but my goal is to just be a fighter here. I I cannot get involved in migration and all these other things. It's just totally overwhelming and too much. Here are the people that you need to go and talk to, and thank you for your interest in the kingdom. It's going to be pretty badass. And there's a player that I didn't even know is here who was one of the strongest players in the game back when the game was new. And I'm going to show you who that player is at the end of this video. I've already done too much with the public service announcement that started this one. But I just, I'm getting too many messages. I'm overwhelmed. Message these people if you want to join the kingdom. 2293, that's where we're at. And if you want to see how to migrate to a kingdom, which you'd be surprised. I had six messages that were like, how do you migrate? Card up in the top for the video where I show exactly how you migrate and how I migrated to this kingdom. So let's get started on the topic for this video, which is commanders. And what the heck are you going to do, Chiskul, now that your uh, Season of Conquest commanders are worthless? They're worse than worthless. They're completely a waste of sculptures in this situation, and their value is only going down unless they release some new commander that makes one of these three commanders, Trajan, Guan, or CJ, better. No, these, these investments are literally rotting, most likely only getting worse relative to what other commanders that come into the game will be. So... What do you do now, Chiskul, that you've made that choice? And by the way, okay, I never would have taken my main back to KVK Season 2. There's no way that I would do that with my main, right? So I'm not judging that other people would do that, but I'm just pointing out that there's a weirdness here about going back to Season of Conquest or, or from Season of Conquest to, to a Young Kingdom, which is that you lose your best equipment, which is the Season of Conquest accessories and, and armor. You lose... Your best commanders. So now what, just cool? Now what do you do that you've invested in these commanders that don't do much for you here? Here is what I'm left with. I've got Ethel. I've got Alex. I've got Esong. Those are my only maxed legendaries. And I don't have, like, Minamoto maxed. I'm, and I'm not planning to do that. I still have, like, CC and Charles Martel and Mehmed and El Cid in a pretty good place. But keep in mind, this is an infantry-focused account. And my equipment has a huge bearing on how effective my commanders will be on the battlefield. What's more is that I want this to remain an infantry-focused account when I enter back into the Season of Conquest in, like, probably six months from now. So what do I do? Where do I put my investments? I have the following three sets of gear, which are really solid. I've got two infantry sets, one of which is on Alex right now, another of which is on Charles Martel, and I've got one leadership set, which is supposed to be on Ethel Fled, and that explains why I haven't been doing as well in Canyon as I thought I should. Yoink! Ha <laughs> Oh, Chisco, you didn't equip the equipment. Well played, you. So, uh, do I have another piece of gear? No, I don't have other gear. I just get to look at my gear that I can't equip and rip 
for all those legendary materials, which are literally wasting away. So, what what do I do? What three pairs do I bring? I want to remain an infantry-focused account. I don't want to make sets of gear that I don't necessarily know for sure that I will use when I enter Season of Conquest. So, that means that my commander pairings, as of this exact moment, if I were going to fight right now, and I'm not... I have about a month to gather some resources, which also is indicating what I'm going to do, by the way. I'm not going to gather enough resources to fight with five marches. I will barely have enough resources to fight with three marches, and I will probably run out of resources. This is just like my reality. Now, what you should be doing is making many farm accounts. I don't have time for that. Completely, 100%, I'm tapped out. I can't do it. So I'm going to have a card up in the top for my farm account guide, if that's something you're interested in. My pairings. Because I'm not making an archer pair, I am going to stick with Alexander the Great and Esong as a top tier, truly meta pair for this season of KVK. Congratulations, Chiskel. You have one meta march. All right, we got there. So Alex and Esong works really well because the march speed enables me to get out of some bad situations with the Esong. Sure, it's not cavalry and cavalry go much, much faster, but compared to how slow my other two marches are going to be, trust me. The Alex E song is going to be my strongest march, and that's going to be my strongest march by a long shot. Now, to get my leadership gear deployed somewhere effective, obviously, Ethelflaed has to be one of my main commanders. But then, who do I make the secondary to Ethelflaed? And in this instance, because I know she can't go very fast, and because her debuff is amazing, and I want to crank it out faster, I'm going for a full AoE combo with my Ethel Flood, and that is going to be Ethel paired with Sun Tzu. Oh yeah, baby. Sun Tzu for the AoE value. Also, there's no special march speed on Ethel Flood, right? So to make that a better situation, I really think it's important that I have the damage taken reduction and the health boost over here. Also, there's a lot of synergy boosting skill damage by 20%, and then Ethel Flood is going to do Damage to five targets. I think that is a really solid combination. And I might swap around this secondary between my third march, which is going to be as follows. My third march, I really have to take advantage of the fact that, you know, my Charles Martel, he's 5-5-4-2. Five, five, and it's a little sad that the four is on a garrison scale, but it is where it is. And 5-5-4-2 five, five, is still really good. So Charles Martel is going to become the primary, and I'm going to have to put a build on him that's designed for open field. Right now, I've got a city garrison build, which I'm just going to stick with for now. I'm in a new kingdom. I'm sure it's quite safe, but like, I'm just going to keep the garrison build is all I'm saying, you know? There's like no reason to switch to the open field. I'm not open field fighting. I'll switch when I get to KVK, okay, to something open fieldy when that time comes. In fact, I mean, I've got plenty of builds for Charles Martel. Card up in the top if you want to see my build guide for him. So I'm going to use the Charles Martel, and the secondary is not going to be Joan of Arc, which I bet you were expecting. Of course, there's going to be a Joan of Arc somewhere in this mix, right? Just cool, because, I mean, if I was using Trajan in Season of Conquest, why wouldn't I use Joan of Arc? And I actually think she's very worthy of use. I should probably play around with the possibility of using a Joan of Arc secondary, either paired with Ethelflaed or um, I could pair with Charles Martel. I think that would be extremely reasonable. But the thing that I really want to try out instead is to use Beer and Ironside. Why do I want to use Beer and Ironside? First of all, although I'm not going to have all the crazy buffs that Joan of Arc is going to give, I am going to do a really nice debuff, making targets take more skill damage. That's very good. It's got decent single target damage but not amazing single target damage. But the thing that I'm really eager to play around with is the instant proc damage that he has. Instant proc damage, everybody, is a big deal. Normal attacks have a 10% chance to trigger direct damage factor, 800, and it's got a five second internal cooldown. So what would you expect this to fire off once every 15 seconds? But I kind of wonder, like, could I do some city popping if I need to? with Alexander the Great and Bjorn Ironside. I still kind of feel like city popping with Alex and Esong has a lot of value in case I do get to skill cycle and the Esong goes big. And I have a card up in the top for a video all about city popping, which is an important tactic to force an enemy off your territory 
even though it's the most frustrating thing in the world to face, it's also brutally efficient and you should be doing it. It just, you, you should. Even though I call it cheeseburgering, it's powerful. So I really like that ability right over there, the instant proc damage. I'm eager to play around with that. The attack boost, the defense boost, it that's fine. Whatever. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the instant proc damage. I'm here for the skill damage taken debuff. And I want to see how I like it. Could be that I'll like the Joan of Arc more, but instant proc damage, baby. Mm, it's so good. So those are the three marches that I intend to use in KVK Season 2. Alex Esong, Martel Bjorn, and Ethel Sun Tzu. Now, I really do think that if I was going to invest in a fourth march, which I don't think I have the gold for, the thing that I should be considering is Saladin. And the reason that I should be considering Saladin is that, hypothetically, I could then bring a Saladin-based march into the Season of Conquest. It would um, basically break up what I've been trying to do with this account, which is go only infantry marches. And the downside there is that to use a Saladin-based march, I would have to invest a bunch of sculptures. I would also then have to make a set of gear, which is not amazing. That's diverting materials away from my infantry, which is not exactly what I want to be doing. And what's more is that by the time I get into Season of Conquest, Saladin as a 5551 will probably be relevant. But will he be meta? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. No one knows what's going to be meta six months from now, right? So the problem with making an investment in a commander in KVK Season 2 with the hopes that it'll still be good later on is that maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. I suspect, and if I were betting money, I would say, yeah, he will be. He will almost certainly be relevant. Making a march go slower is actually very, very helpful. The damage factor is solid, even unmaxed. 1,400 is fine. Healing reduction is relevant. Giving yourself a little bit of march speed, attack, and defense is great. Making it so you take less skill damage, as well as take less counterattack damage, is fantastic. This would be probably the best best investment I could make if I wanted to go in the direction of having another commander that is Season of Conquest viable. Now, on screen, I do have Constantine, and I do have Richard the First, and I just want to talk for a second about why I wouldn't invest in them, even though I'm an infantry player. And I think that although, like, Constantine is, is really solid, he does some cool stuff, man, making everybody take less damage. The thing is that I've already gone in on the Trajan plan. I want all my marshes to do lots of skill damage. I don't want to be investing in commanders when I bring yet another march to the field that aren't focused on skill damage. Well, Constantine is not focused on skill damage. Nor is Richard I focused on skill damage. Yeah, I get that he's got good debuffs, right? His debuff is very strong, and he heals himself, which... Gosh bless, they just keep adding more ways to counter healing, don't they? So, yeah, I could do Richard the First. I could even do him 5551. Five, five, and I'll tell you, any of these commanders, the Constantine, the Richard the First, the Saladin, they all are going to be absolutely fantastic for KVK Season 2. But if there's a theme to what I'm saying here that you take away from this video, it's that I don't know if that stuff's still going to be relevant for Season of Conquest. And then I have to live with Season of Conquest the rest of the life of my account, because I don't intend to keep migrating back to KVK2, although I guess I could. So all of that to say that I'm very hesitant to make an investment that I don't know is going to be amazing when I get to the end game. And I, you know, do quotes for end game because it's always evolving, right? But I'm very hesitant to make any investment in a commander that I'm not extremely confident I would use in the end game or if it's a brand new commander, that I'm actually okay kind of investing in just to see if it's good, and then I can advise you. But I know I know how good Saladin is. I've got guides on that. I've got guides on all these commanders. So I'm just going to hang tight with those three marches that I've got, and I feel like those are great choices. But I'm eager for your choices with my commanders that I've got here. What would you do if you were in my shoes? What pairs would you pick? And keep in mind... As much as I'd love to have five marches, I'm going to be resource constrained. So, for those of you who made it this far in the video, do you know who is that top 10 player by power that was in the original power ranking lists 
that is here in this kingdom. One of the top 10 players by power back when KVK season one and two was a thing. It was a pleasant surprise to find an alt from Crunky in this kingdom. Now, how do I know this is an original Crunky account? Uh, well, if you go into his pictures, I mean, sure, somebody could have this old school picture in their account and pretend to be Crunky, but that, that picture right here was the original way that you knew like the highest power players in the game is like someone had went in and they made this spreadsheet like manually updating it by looking at different kingdoms and like it wasn't known who all the strongest players were so people would submit like oh yeah there's this player in this kingdom you should go check them out and this this spreadsheet was manually updated so number 10 on the list and I wish this had a date tied to it as well so we knew exactly when this was is Crunky at 148 million power, uh, and what, man, what, oh, oh, he was in Kingdom 1135 with his man at that time. Man, he, he ended up, I think he was in 39 White Tigers very briefly, but he, he went a different direction, uh, and, I mean, it's gonna be fun playing with him. It's been a pleasant surprise seeing some folks that I, I know in this kingdom that I didn't realize were going to be here. Uh, I don't know that Crunky's going to wail on this account. And I, like, quite frankly, I'm not planning to wail on alt accounts. You know what I mean? Like, I spend here and there, but I try to put all the money into my main account. But also, I mean, I made some big, pretty big contributions this last KVK on my restart project. I got over 30 million kills. I sent over 2 million troops to die. I feel like it did all right. But if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. I've mentioned a ton of other videos that you can go watch with cards up in the top. And to that end, if you want to see me fighting on this account and how I pulled down, I think it was 500 million kill points just about in the last KVK, which was pretty sweet. Uh, go check out the fighting. I did record a lot of it. All right, enough, enough rambling, Chiskool. I'm done. I'm out. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. And by the way, let me know in the comments below if there's any other KVK season two slash um, jumping back uh, questions that you have that you want to see answered in a video.